When you close your eyes and imagine the impossible, do you feel a natural inclination to lift off the ground and transcend your current reality? The audacious notion of flying beyond our physical limits ignites a spark within the daring soul. You've been told it's impossible, cautioned against the very thought, yet something within you stirs, relentless and bold. This is the essence of human defiance against the seemingly insurmountable, against those who decree the boundaries of what can be achieved. They said it was impossible, yet still, we dare say, I can fly. There lies the vortex of consciousness, an enigmatic force that defies the gravitational pull of mundane reality. Consciousness, you must understand, is the bedrock upon which all matter rests. It is not passive, it is dynamic, an active participant in the creation of your reality. Each thought, each burst of mental energy, contributes to the composition of your physical existence. Think of the implications. Your daily frustrations, your joys, and deepest fears are more than fleeting emotions. They are the architects of your world, shaping the physical conditions around you with a precision that defies randomness. This understanding elevates consciousness from a mere byproduct of the brain to a fundamental force, as crucial as gravity in its ability to influence the cosmos. Yet, this power is not without its burdens. The collective consciousness creates a density, a heaviness that can anchor you in a sea of limiting beliefs. These beliefs, filtered through layers of personal and societal conditioning, form a gravitational pull of their own, shaping your perceptions and experiences. Your challenge, therefore, is to go through this density, to recognize the weight of outdated doctrines and to rise above them. This is no small feat. It demands vigilance and clarity to identify how collective narratives shape your personal reality and to consciously choose which beliefs serve your growth and which should be discarded. The process of disentangling oneself from these dense, often invisible networks of belief is akin to redefining gravity itself. It requires a reorientation of one's mental compass, a recalibration of one's existential gravity. By engaging actively with your own consciousness, by questioning and refining your beliefs, you begin to lighten the load of collective density. This act of mental and spiritual defiance sets you free from the vortex that seeks to confine your potential and your understanding of the universe. Accept this knowledge, for it is the first step on a journey of profound transformation. Remember, in the realm of consciousness, you are both the created and the creator. Your beliefs shape the world just as the world shapes your beliefs. To transcend the physical bounds that tether you to a mundane existence, it is imperative that you select perception, a way of engaging with the world that is open, curious, and devoid of immediate conclusions. Judgment, by contrast, is a closure. It seals off understanding and barricades the mind against further inquiry, anchoring you in the quicksand of outdated beliefs and biases. Consider this. Each moment presents an opportunity to perceive the world anew, to meet each experience without the baggage of past conclusions. This approach does not merely change your understanding of events, it transforms them. When you choose to perceive rather than judge, you engage with the world as a participant in a grand exploration, where every interaction is a chance to expand your horizons and deepen your connection with the universe. This shift from judgment to perception opens doors that were once invisible to you, revealing pathways that lead beyond the physical and into realms of greater depth and meaning. Moreover, the conscious choice to prioritize love over materialistic gains, what I call love over gold, is a powerful manifestation of choosing perception over judgment. Love, in this context, is not merely an emotion, but a state of awareness that perceives the interconnectedness of all things, it recognizes that material gain, while necessary for physical survival, does not enrich the soul, nor free the spirit. Embracing love over gold is an act of profound insight, a declaration that the essence of life does not reside in what can be held in one's hands, but what can be cherished in one's heart. In practical terms, when faced with decisions, ask yourself, does this path enhance my capacity to love, to connect, to understand? 
or does it merely promise the illusion of security, a golden shackle that binds me to the superficial? This practice, when applied consistently, cultivates a life that is rich in experiences and relationships, rather than possessions, paving the way for a fuller, more spiritually aligned existence. By choosing perception, by seeing the world and yourself through the lens of compassionate awareness, you begin to dismantle the ego's defenses, layer by layer, until the soul's true nature is revealed in all its luminescent glory. Additionally, gravity and entropy play their parts by anchoring and decaying, drawing things down and wearing them away. Yet within this cosmic orchestra lies a lesser heard melody, the subtle yet profound forces of levity and negentropy. These are the forces that defy the downward pull and the decay, that elevate and order, that lift and renew. And you, armed with the knowledge to harness these forces, can rise upon them, soaring with what the ancients called the wings of nine, the nine muses of creativity that propel the soul to flights of sublime transformation. Levity, in its essence, is more than mere lightness. It is an upward force that counters gravity. It is found not only in the physical realm, but also within the metaphysical, where it influences the spirit and the mind. Picture levity as the uplifting breeze that can elevate your thoughts from the mundane to the magnificent, from the heavy to the heavenly. It is this force that you must seek and foster within yourself, a levity of being that frees you from the burdens that tether you to lesser concerns and allows your spirit to ascend. Negentropy, on the other hand, is the counter to entropy. While entropy speaks of chaos and decline, negentropy is the principle of order and renewal. It is the organizational force that transforms scattered thoughts into coherent vision, disparate spirits into unified will. Harnessing negentropy in your life means aligning your actions with a purpose that reverses the disarray around you, turning confusion into clarity and discord into harmony. It is the architect of resilience, the builder of bridges across the tumultuous seas of chaos. To soar upon these forces, you must tune into the sound of the earth, the deep, resonant tone that vibrates with the wisdom of the ages. This sound is not heard with the ears, but with the soul. It requires a deep listening, a meditative attunement to the rhythms of nature and the pulses of life. Here, amidst the silent symphony of existence, you can find the chords that resonate with the wings of nine, the creative energies that fuel innovation, art, and transformation. At the heart of this transcendent evolution is the force of unconditional love, a power so profound and so potent that it can activate the so-called junk DNA, the dormant codes within your genome that scientists once dismissed as useless, but which hold the keys to a vast reservoir of human potential. This is not mere conjecture, but a gateway to a new realm of existence, where love is not a mere emotion but a catalyst for transformation. Unconditional love, pure, boundless, and without expectation, serves as a frequency that resonates with the deeper structures of your being, vibrating with the hidden strands of your DNA. It is a force that liberates and elevates, that heals and harmonizes. When you embody and express this kind of love, you do more than change the atmosphere around you. You initiate a profound internal revolution. Each act of genuine kindness, each moment of unconditional love, sends ripples through the very core of your biology, encouraging growth, fostering renewal, and activating those parts of your genetic heritage that have lain silent for generations. The concept of nine, often revered as divine, plays a pivotal role in this process. In many spiritual traditions, the number nine symbolizes completeness and enlightenment, the highest state of spiritual and physical ascent. It is the number of the cosmos, the spiral that moves outward and upward, touching all facets of existence. The integration of the concept of nine in this context is not arbitrary, but deeply symbolic. It represents the holistic activation of human capabilities through the power of love, encompassing all levels of being, physical, emotional, spiritual, and beyond. To unlock this profound power within you, begin by cultivating a state of unconditional love in your daily interactions. Practice seeing others not as separate from you, 
but as extensions of your own life force, connected by the invisible threads of existence. Let your actions be guided by compassion and empathy, rather than judgment or expectation. As you do this, you will notice a subtle but significant shift within yourself, a lightning, a freeing of energy that propels you forward in your spiritual and evolutionary journey. Moreover, welcome the daily practice of meditation focused on the heart center, envisioning it as a radiant sun that emits rays of unconditional love. Visualize this love reaching out, touching all beings, healing wounds, and awakening dormant potentials, not only in others but within yourself. This practice not only aligns you with the divine aspects of the number nine, but also activates the deepest, most sacred parts of your being, paving the way for a transformation that is as profound as it is divine. Thus, the journey to unlocking the power of unconditional love is both a return and an ascent, a return to the purest essence of your humanity and an ascent to the limitless potential of your divinity. Embrace this journey with all your heart, for it promises to elevate your existence to realms of joy and capability that you have only begun to imagine. As you ascend on the winds of newfound abilities, empowered by the deeper insights and capabilities you have unlocked, heed this vital chapter, a chapter that serves as both shield and compass. In the realm of elevated existence, where you navigate the ethers of potential and reality, maintaining the purity of your intention is not merely advisable, it is essential. This purity is the rudder that steers your journey, ensuring that your flight remains true to its course, bound by the noblest aspects of your spirit. The first cautionary wisdom I impart is the necessity to keep the act of flying rooted in the heart, not the intellect. The heart is where compassion, empathy, and unconditional love reside, qualities that fuel your ascent with grace and purpose. When flight moves from the heart to the head, it becomes a mechanical act, stripped of its sacredness and susceptible to the ego's whims. This transition from heart to head can be subtle. It begins the moment you view your abilities as tools for personal gain rather than gifts for collective upliftment. The danger here is profound. The head, governed by rationality and self-interest, can lead you astray, turning your divine ascent into a fall from grace. Reflect on the myth of Icarus, a tale woven with timeless truths about the human condition. Icarus, with wings crafted by his father Daedalus, was warned not to fly too close to the sun. Yet, in his exhilaration, he forgot the caution and soared higher, driven by pride and the thrill of his power. His tragic fall, precipitated by the melting wax of his wings, serves as a stark reminder. The sun, the blazing symbol of ultimate truth and power, will melt the wings of nine if they are used unwisely or disclosed carelessly. This allegory is not merely about the physical act of flying too high, but about the metaphorical risk of overreaching, of pushing beyond moral and ethical boundaries in the pursuit of knowledge or power. When the world lies hushed and the boundary between night and day blurs, there exists a sacred window known as the Brahma Muhurta. This time, approximately 90 minutes before sunrise, holds a profound potential that ancient wisdom and modern seekers alike revere as the optimal time to ascend, not in the physical sense, but in a deeply spiritual flight. This is the hour where the veil between the temporal and the eternal is thinnest, a time when the distractions of the day are yet asleep, and the mind's canvas is clear and receptive to the whispers of the divine. During Brahma Muhurta, the world pulses with a subtle vitality, a nectar time that rejuvenates the soul and sharpens the mind. This period is imbued with a unique quality of stillness and serenity that enhances meditation, prayer, and introspection, allowing you to soar inward to the highest peaks of your consciousness. The air is not just filled with the faint murmur of awakening nature, but also with the potent energy of renewal and possibility. It is as if the universe itself is inhaling deeply, gathering energy to launch the sun above the horizon. And in this cosmic breath, you find a synchronicity with life's deeper rhythms. Welcoming this mystical hour requires discipline 
and a deliberate intention to rise from the warmth of slumber into the cool, crisp prelude of day. Yet those who answer this call discover that the effort to greet the dawn is rewarded manifold. In these wee hours, your mind, unencumbered by the clutter of daily concerns or the inertia of midday lethargy, reaches a clarity and depth that later hours cannot replicate. The solitude and peace enhance your ability to connect with your inner self, to listen deeply to your own thoughts and feelings, and to commune with the divine forces that pervade the cosmos. Moreover, this time is not only about spiritual elevation, but also about setting the tone for the day ahead. The insights gained, the peace encountered, and the intentions set during Brahma Muhurta carry forward into the daylight hours, influencing how you interact with the world around you. You carry the calm and the clarity into your daily tasks, coloring your interactions with compassion and your challenges with patience. Thus I urge you, arise in the Brahma Muhurta and fly into the realm of self-discovery and divine connection. This is your time to soar beyond the confines of earthly limitations and touch the sublime essence of existence. Within the depths of your dreams, you find the first stirrings of liberation from the physical, a rehearsal in the art of transcending the tangible. Lucid dreaming, a phenomenon where the dreamer becomes aware that they are dreaming, serves as a critical gateway in this exploration. It is here, in the lucid state, that you gain the potential to consciously navigate the dream world. This awareness is akin to finding a hidden path in a dense forest. Once discovered, it invites you to explore realms of existence that lie beyond passive dreaming, offering control and intentionality in a landscape typically governed by the chaotic subconscious. In this heightened state, the act of flying becomes a deliberate choice, a willed movement that defies the gravity of sleep-induced illusions. Astral travel, or the out-of-body experience, extends this concept further, suggesting a separation of consciousness from the physical form. It is as if you shed your earthly casing to soar in a more ethereal body across dimensions that the waking mind struggles to comprehend. This experience is more than an escape. It's an expansion, a thinning of the veil between the physical and the metaphysical that provides profound insights into the nature of your existence and the universe. Through astral travel, you engage with a reality that is typically veiled by the limits of your sensory perceptions, gaining access to a plane of existence that is as real as it is mysterious. You might wonder how these experiences can influence your waking life. Each flight in the dream world lays the groundwork for a broader understanding of freedom and capability, teaching you lessons in control, perception, and the power of thought. These lessons, when carried into wakefulness, have the potential to alter not just your self-perception, but your interaction with the world. They instill a deep-seated understanding that the boundaries you perceive around you are often self-imposed, dictated more by belief than by any absolute laws of nature. Thus, I call upon you to cultivate this art of dreaming your flying. Engage with your dreams actively. Prepare your mind each night as you would for a journey. Keep a dream journal. Practice reality checks during the day and meditate on your intention to remember and control your dreams. Mastering the art of sensory integration is akin to acquiring a new language, a language that speaks not in words, but in the full spectrum of sensory experience. Here, within this dreamscape, you have the unique opportunity to reconfigure the traditional roles of your senses, to blend and bend them in ways that transcend ordinary waking life. This alchemy of the senses is not just a novelty. It is a profound tool that can propel your ability to fly within the dream and beyond. Consider the possibility of seeing through your nose or hearing through your eyes, engaging in sensory crosstalk that defies every rule you've learned about how the body is supposed to function. This unconventional use of the senses can be disorienting at first, but with practice, it becomes a gateway to a more holistic perception of the dream world. It allows for a richer, more immersive experience where every element is interconnected, enhancing your navigational abilities within the dream and providing a deeper understanding of its symbolic language. 
The technique to achieve this sensory integration begins with heightened awareness and intentionality in your waking life. Start by focusing on one sense at a time. Really listen to the world, for example. Then close your eyes and try to map out your surroundings purely through auditory inputs. Engage in similar exercises with other senses. Taste the air after a rainstorm. Touch the bark of a tree and visualize its intricate patterns. Smell the pages of an old book and decode the history it carries. These exercises aren't just practices in mindfulness. They are rehearsals for the dream state, where your senses will need to perform with enhanced synergy and creativity. As you transition these practices into your sleep, begin each night by setting a clear intention to remember and integrate your sensory experiences within your dreams. Use visualization techniques as you drift off to sleep. Visualize yourself flying, not just with the freedom of movement, but with a full spectrum of senses engaged. Picture the colors of the sky, the sound of the wind against your face, the scent of the clouds, and the texture of the light around you. This multi-sensory approach in dreams does more than enrich your nocturnal adventures. It trains your mind to perceive and think in more holistic, integrated ways, even during waking hours. It encourages a fluidity of thought and perception that can enhance creativity, problem-solving, and emotional intelligence. Thus, by integrating all senses into one coherent experience in dreams, you not only enhance your capacity for flying in the dream world, but also deepen your engagement with the waking world. This practice of sensory integration teaches you that limitations are often self-imposed and that with imagination and practice, you can expand not just how you dream, but how you perceive and interact with all of reality. Accept this journey of sensory exploration, for it promises to elevate your understanding of both your dreams and your waking life, weaving them together in a dance of dazzling complexity and infinite possibility. Therefore, as you explore the lofty realms you have unlocked, remain vigilant. Guard against the seduction of pride and the allure of overconfidence. Regularly examine your intentions, ensuring they remain pure and aligned with the greater good. Engage in practices that ground you, be it meditation, community service, or simple acts of kindness, to prevent your abilities from disconnecting you from the humbling essence of human experience. Wield your powers with a heart anchored in humility and hands ready to serve. Let this guidance be your safeguard, ensuring that your flight remains not only high but holy, a journey that honors the sacred trust bestowed upon you as you step into the sunlit expanses of your true potential.